Now in this section we'll see how to do interval and routing the third option by using a, a layer 3 switch, multi-layer switches. Now uh, we have some uh, multi-layer switches, we typically we call them as L3 switches which not only provide a L2 connection, they work as a normal layer 2 ports where they can identify the devices based on the MAC addresses. They can also have some layer 3 ports which can be connected to router and also they can also do IP addressing. And also you can implement some routing on that protocols. So it's, it's almost like it, it is capable of doing some most of the routing features. We'll see get into that layer switch models in a separate videos. So I'm not getting into that. So in simple I can say a multi-layer switch is a switch which not only do switching but also capable of doing routing. So now the major drawback with our previous method, if you remember the router on stick method, like initially we started with this separate interfaces where we are using a separate physical interface for each and every VLAN. Then we have come across with sub interfaces where uh, every router, every router will be having a sub separate sub interface for each and every VLAN. Now this way we can reduce the cost where we can have uh, where we can just have one one single physical interface and we can use it for multiple VLANs. But there was a major drawback with this router on stick. There was a major concern with the latency. Because now your packet comes from uh, from this end, it comes at a speed of a switch. You know, switches are high speed devices because they do the forwarding inside the hardware. So which means your packets comes at a wide speed on the switch and then it has to, in order to travel to other and other VLAN of the same switch or it can be in the same LAN it has to go through router and the router is doing the layer 3 lookup which means it is doing some software routing so it has to check the destination network ID check the next stop address and then forward to the exit interface and then it has to forward back on the same interface again and then probably it is going through the switch or same switch or different switch but definitely it is going within the same LAN so the problem with this one is it is going to add more latency or more delay to the packets. So at the same time, you need to have a dedicated uh, router which is doing this job, a dedicated router we can say. So to overcome this kind of issues, the, they come up with, Cisco has come up with a switch which is not only capable of doing switching the packets and it also capable of switching the packet between the VLANs at a wide speed. It doesn't need to do a uh, complete software routing. It just forward the packets based on uh, between the different VLANs also. Now SVI is a logical interface. Now here we'll be using something called SVI interface. I'll come to this. Now how it is possible? But the question is how how it is going to do that. So for this, what we are going to do is we are going to connect a L3 switch. Probably I might be using my 3550 or 3560 switch, a distribution level switch, or it can be any high end core switch like 4500, 6500 if you have. Uh, more number of uh, VLANs but we need to have a layer 3 switch where which is also going to connect to your end devices which is acting as a layer 2 ports assigned to VLAN 10 and then we also have a layer 2 ports assigned to VLAN 20 and the good thing about this is you don't need to have a separate physical interface for default gateway you know we need to have a gateway for gateway is mandatory because if you want to switch the traffic between the different networks, it first goes to the gateway and the gateway is going to forward again back to the other, other gateway or through the other gateway it will reach the other VLAN. But now here we don't need to have a separate physical gateway. We can have something called SVIs, Switch Virtual Interfaces. Now SVI is a logical interface which is configured in a multi-layer switch instead of using an external router or external trunk link like that which we did in the previous cases. You don't need to have a physical port. So which means if these ports are belonging to VLAN 10, we need to assign the IP address to the VLAN 10 itself. Now that will act as a gateway. Now you don't need a separate physical interface. We are simply assigning the IP address to the existing VLAN interface. VLAN interface. Now this VLAN interface itself called as SVI. SVI for VLAN 10, SVI for VLAN 20. Now in that case again, if you have three VLANs, we need to create VLAN 30 also and then we have to assign the IP address as 192.168.3.100. You don't need a separate router for this because your switch itself is doing the job and you don't need a separate physical link also 
and at the same time it is going to switch the packets between the VLANs on a wide speed because it is on the same switch or same LAN so it's going to maintain that information in the uh, in your hardware and then it's going to forward the packet so you don't need to have a separate link and it's faster than a router strong stick method so this is one of the most common uh, implementation which you'll find in the production networks in today's scenarios where you will be using a layer 3 switch which is totally replace your routers so even anyway routers are dedicated for the WAN connections but within the LAN if you want to route your packets you can still have a router and this you can still have a layer 3 switch and you can just uh, also connect this switch to a router and you can also use it for WAN purpose so that will get into that uh, in with labs so first let us try to configure this thing so let's verify this so now what I already have my computers here assigned with IP addresses 192.168.1.1.1.2 with a gateway address of 192.168.1.100 and then these two devices 192.168.2.1 and 2.2 and they also have the gateway of 192.168.2. Network. So more like this one here I, I, have, I have all the things in my diagram so we'll We'll see. So exactly as per the diagram. So the only thing is on the switch side, I did not do any configurations. Switch side, it's just complete blank configurations. There's nothing configured, just like a blank switch. Now what I want to do is I want to create. The first step is common. We need to create a VLAN, VLAN 10. Sorry, uh, interface range VLAN F0 by 1 and 2. We need to say switch port mode access, switch port access VLAN 10. I'm going to assign the port number 1 and 2 in the VLAN 10 and then I'm going to say interface range F0 by 3 and 4 switch port mode access, switch port access VLAN 20 so the next two computers on port number 3 and 4 are connecting to VLAN 20 and then I'm going to create SVI so the first step is we need to create assign uh, create a VLAN and shift the ports and then we the next step is simply creating the SVIs that's it. You don't need any extra link. We don't need a trunk link here. So just on the switch, we need to go to interface VLAN 10 and then assign the IP address to the VLAN 10 interface itself. So I'm going to say 192.168.1.100, 255.255.255.0. Uh, no shutdown. Uh, it's not required because these SVIs are by default. They will come up except VLAN 1. So I can say you can see the interface comes up automatically. And I'm going to assign the IP address 192.168.2.100.255.255.255.255.0. So next thing, if you verify show IP interface brief, you can see the VLAN 10 and 20 will have an IP addresses, which are the gateways. Now, if you try to ping to the end host, the, our computers, you can have a communication. Means you can also test like this 2.1 and then 2.2 and then finally if I if I try to verify from my end devices I'll go to my one of my physical computer here it's it's my configurations I'll go to the command prompt and then I'll try to verify my IP address I'm on 192.168.1.1 and I'm trying to ping to 192.168.2.1 which is on a different network and different VLAN. Now you can see the communication is not happening. I should expect the communication should happen, but there is one more thing I think we missed, we didn't configure, that is routing. Routing we did not enable. So now always remember one thing: whenever we use any uh, layer three switch as a router, you need to enable a layer three routing in that. So unlike in uh, routers, we do, we already have that this something enabled by default we have to give a command called IP routing in the config mode. So if you don't give this command, routing is not enabled here. If you verify here, show IP route. Okay, I can see the interfaces. Let's try to enable IP routing. And let's verify one more time from my PC. You can see it's communicating. So in, in some of the switches, this IP routing is enabled by default. So you need to check whether it's enabled or not. So it's it's a good practice. You can see here. Now if I try to trace 192.168.2.1, .1, you 
you can see first the packet goes to 192.168.1.100 which is the SVI interface of the switch and then reaches 2.1